I wanted to make today's video on Kaer Morhen, so I wanted to just go over the basic history of this ancient witch's stronghold and go over what sort of happened there of significance, how at least how we can assume it was built, and well, you know, just what it is. So some of the information we get from The Witcher 3 is that Kaer Morhen is where the School of the Wolf are situated, you know, that's their home base, that's where they were trained. And while this is true, in past tense, it's not true anymore. At the end of The Witcher 3, or by the end of the Battle of Kaer Morhen, it's sort of abandoned by the School of the Wolf. Geralt can still go back there if you want to as the player, but Eskel and Lambert leave after, you know, Vesemir's death, leaving it an empty keep. So it's no longer their home, and new witches aren't being trained there. I suppose you could say Ciri is a witcher in a way, not mutated, but she still has the training. So there's an interesting piece of information about how, how Kaer Morhen actually got its name, because um, if you wonder, for example, in Lord of the Rings they have Minas Tirith, Minas Morgul, etc. Minas means tower. So it's, you know, the question is does Kaer Morhen actually have a meaning? And it turns out it does. So the name is sort of a, I suppose you could say, a corruption of the Elder Speech. And the Elder Speech word that it's corrupted from is Kaer a Muren which I might be saying wrong, but I'll put it on screen. And what this basically means is Old Sea Key. And the reason that Kaer Morhen is taken from that word is because there is actually presence of fossilized sea creatures embedded in the stones of which it was built. So, as we just know from general fossils in real life, certain rocks actually have creatures embedded in them through, you know, fossilization. And all the stones that were used to build Kaer Morhen were built out of rocks that had sea creatures in, so that's where it gets its name. So, as we all know, there was an attack on Kaer Morhen, or you may not know. And I want to go over the reason for why it was actually attacked. So the main reason is that people basically were scared of them. They didn't like the fact humans were being mutated and changed and made into these monster killers, and they wanted to get rid of them permanently. And there was hordes of fanatics that went to each of the witch keeps and destroyed them. So Kaer Morhen was attacked. And one of the reasons for this is because of, as I said, the hate, and the hate came from something known as a monstrum, or a description of a witcher. So this is a anonymous piece of hate literature written by somebody about witches, and this caused some, this is thought to possibly have been what caused a lot of the rioting. So allow me to read it. Indeed, there is nothing more repulsive than these monsters that defied nature and are known by the name of witcher, as they are the offspring of foul sorcery and witchcraft. They are unscrupulous scoundrels, without conscience and virtue, veritable creatures from hell capable only of taking lives. They have no place amongst decent and honest folk, and this Kaer Morhen, where these villains nest and practice foul rituals, must be wiped off the face of the earth, and all evil traces of it need to be treated with salt and saltpetre to complete the deed. So that's what was written, and this caused a lot of riots, etc. So after that, a horde of fanatics went and laid siege to Kaer Morhen. The mob could not capture the fortress, so instead they laid it to ruin with the help of mages. Practically all witches who were in the fortress perished. For among those witches who called Kaer Morhen home, only a few survived the massacre, due, to, due only to the fact that they were not present at the time. So Vesemir survived, I think he was actually there. I believe Vesemir was there and he hid under like dead bodies and witches. I'm not sure you can correct me on that. And obviously Geralt, Lambert and Eskel survived too, and I imagine a couple other witches here and there. So that's a little story about how the witches I suppose you could say kind of when and they stopped inhabiting Kaer Morhen. Um, well they still do in the games at the start, but there aren't many left. So the castle could only be reached by the Witcher's Trail, which is a very easy to miss trail. It encircles the keep and it is often given a different name by young witches. It's also known as the Killer. So it's it's like, um, uh, the best thing I could probably give it to you as an example is if you've ever played Skyrim and there is the Fort Dawnguard, there's like that very easy to miss cave entrance. I imagine it's a little bit like that on the outside. I actually corrected myself earlier, there was a Witcher trained after Ciri, which is Leo, who dies at the start of The Witcher 1. You actually can find his grave in The Witcher 3, uh, in Camon well, in the valley. So another little bit of information, the bones of the dead actually remain at the bottom of the moat that surround the stronghold. They're left there as a reminder of the massacre that was born directly hit for hatred of them. So it, it's it's basically a, you know, this is what happened to us, we're outcasts sort of message. It's actually quite ironic because witches are now in the modern day of the witch universe considered forgotten relics of the past. You know, like how the monsters that they once hunted and there were loads of them at one point, you know, they, they became relics just because of the witches, you know, the fact that they killed them all. And, you know, they talk about rare monsters in the Witcher that at one point in their lifetime weren't so rare. But now it, the whole situation has almost flipped. I mean, the monsters are still considered, you know, relics, but the witches are as well, because there aren't many of them left. I mean, look around when you play the witch games, how many witches do you actually meet? Not many at all. So I wanted to first talk about Kaer Morhen in the Witcher original game, you know, Witcher PC. 
that was the original Witcher game, Witcher 1. It is a great game. It's a little bit clunky and not as refined as I'd say The Witcher 2 or 3. But if you just want to get it for the lore, it is a great game and it's, it costs basically nothing. So that pro the prologue of that first game is actually set in Kermorn. You get to explore a lot of Kermorn, just the actual keep though. For example, um, after I played The Witcher 1, I went back on The Witcher 3 and was like, oh, I wonder if I can go to the laboratory. And I went there and I was like, oh because it was completely blocked off. And there's this entire upper floor that you can't get to in The Witcher 3, but you can in The Witcher PC. And it, it's very interesting just to s maybe even just play that first part of the game just to get an idea of Care More. And you can also go to many of the seas, but I'll get into that later. Well, at a later date. So on the first floor, there is the kitchen and the dining hall. That, that This is in the original game. There's also the courtyard. The second floor, there's the evening hall, the library, the armory, and the west hall, which you get to go to. The upper floor is Triss's room, which I believe you can still go to in The Witcher 3. And in the basement, there's the witch's laboratory and the Circle of Whispering Stones, which you can go to in The Witcher 1, but not 3. In The Witcher original game, I believe it's not possible to go back to Care Morn after you complete the prologue and Leo's death, etc. So, it's just, just a good time to explore it when you actually are in the prologue. So, next I want to talk about some witches that are of the school of the wolf and live there at some point. I don't want to get too into all the witches, etc, because they could be for later videos of individual characters, but I'm going to be using some witches that are only mentioned in the graphic novel of Zadra, and a lot of people might not consider that canon, but it, it hasn't been confirmed or not confirmed if it's canon or not, and you can introduce it to your own canons if you want. So a lot of this lore, I must mention, uh, the sources I get it from, it doesn't specifically state where it's got it from. So a lot of it might have just been off comments from the author, etc. But you can assume, so far, everything I say is canon. You know, to the games at least, and possibly the books. Certainly to the games. Okay, so residents of the Witcher School of the Wolf. There was Rennes who was the leader of the School of the Wolf. Not much is really known about him. Vesemir, who was their fencing teacher. Geralt, as we know as the White Wolf, Eskel, Lambert, Berenger, Leo, Aubrey, Frank, Gardis, Gewald, Gwen, Heminx, Tujold, Barmin, which was Vesemir's mentor, Cormac, Elgar, Varin, Voltaheir, Gwyn Gwydon, Old, the Old Witcher. So the Old Witcher is a remarkable man, if only because witches rarely reach old age. He was a really old witcher, I just wanted to talk about him quickly. He was in the Hexa TV series, and he was the one that actually took Geralt to Kaer Morhen and watched over him. He was close friends with Vesemir, so he was basically Geralt's old mentor, well, the one that got Geralt. So the next is Clovis, Gascaden, Ospert, Sorel, Clef, Thornwald, Chiradan, Dermot Maranga, and that's all of them. Except from Cohen, which we don't know if he was from the School of the Wolf, but he could possibly have been from Povis, because he's said to have come from there. So there's non-Witcher residents, which are people that live there that weren't actually witches. So Dagobert Sula, who was the supervisor of the Trial of Glass Grasses, so I imagine that they would watch over as the mutations were taking hold, and they were a mage. Estriel Tyson and Agnes of Ad Edern, they were in hiding. Diodde Ademe in hiding, and Siri. So they're the only non witches to have been there, except from obviously Triss, Yennefer, etc., etc. Like people that actively lived there for extended periods of time, they were everyone. So in the first game, as I was talking about earlier, the current residents there were Eskel, Lambert, Leo, Triss, and Vesemir. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting, that entire section of it. So they're all the witches and what the whole castle is made up of. There are also many hidden parts of the castle that you don't get to in any of the games, um, just because Kermorin is meant to be absolutely massive. So I was going to tell you how Kermorin was built, and all that we can assume is that in the past, it's not really gone into too much, witches must have been an incredibly important faction within the world. They must have been given money, or at least the resources to be able to build something this great. Perhaps a kingdom built the castle for them. You know, uh, they, they are actually located in um, Kedwen, so possibly the old king could have helped them build their fort. Not much is really known about that entire bit, but we can assume it was probably some sort of help with it. Or potentially, they, the witches just made enough money to be able to build it themselves. You never know. You, you can come up with multiple theories about that, but there's no actual confirmation of how it was made. We can just assume it was for that reason. So, the actual location of it is in the Kermoran Valley. And I know it's not exactly an inventive name, but it's because the valley was just a valley until Kaer Morhen was made there. The valley was named after Kaer Morhen, I suppose you could say. And it's also right next to the Gwen Lech River. So according to Vesemir, Kaer Morhen was actually the home to 23 witches and 40 students before it was attacked. So that many witches were killed, we can assume. Kaer, or Kier, means city in Breton, while Kier means city or fortress in Cornish. Kaer means the, the same in Welsh 
Morlen means bay in Britain. Mor, hen, means old sea in Welsh. So they've taken a lot of inspiration. Well, the author's taken a lot of inspiration from actual world history to get these names. Yeah, so as I said, it's almost like Lord of the Rings where it was Minas Tirith, etc. So Minas is fortress, I think. Or tower, sorry. So I suppose it would probably translate to City of the Sea or something like that. So that's all we know about Care Morn so far. If there's any information that you guys personally know and you know it to be true, please comment down below. What I like to do is if any of you actually put a comment there, I can only pin one YouTube comment, but if some of you make a comment that is particularly, like, good, you know, it explains stuff that I haven't explained in the video, if I pin that, it's great because then when people watch the video, they can scroll down, they see your comment, and I'll be like, oh right, I didn't know that, and he didn't mention it in the video because he must have missed it, so it's cool to have that little bit extra. So if you guys know any cool little bits of information, please be sure to comment it down below, and I'll try and it'll just help other people out too. I'm sure I've gone over everything, but just in case there's anything. So anyway, that's the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, everybody. Be sure to subscribe if you're new as I make videos like this every other day. If you are a current subscriber to the channel, if you like the video, it lets me know that you like this type of content and it'll c keep me making it because then, uh, you know, it, if videos don't get as many likes as other ones, I think, well, people don't like that as much. So, you know, I want to I wanna do it for me, but I more want to do it for you guys because it's awesome to just see you enjoying them. So, yeah, I'll see you all later. Have an awesome time, guys. Have a great week. I think this video will be coming out on Thursday, so have a cool weekend or Friday. <laughs> Bye, guys.